and on and on and on and on. Good God, that arc went on forever. Yep. I mean, they, they tried everything to destroy the account. Seriously. Nothing worked. So, Not even the God cards. So, that was the thing. You know what? Hold up, guys. Stop. I'm the Pharaoh. He's disrespecting me, my family, all this. I summon Obelisk the Tormentor. Yeah. <laughs> this is fucked up. That's his answer. It could have been worse. He could have summoned Raw right away. True. Very true. See, he actually went in ascending power. I mean, technically, Obelisk and Slifer are, are on the same tier. It's on the tablet. But, yeah. in terms of exponential power, yeah, that. I honestly believe the Slifer is the Pharaoh's personal favorite anyway. Uh, I mean, well, look at the... was his first god card. Before that, I mean, even. I mean, even back in the ancient past. I mean, look at what the hell he does later. So, yeah, okay. Okay, you you supposedly defeated my deer bound. That's it. Fine. Whatever. Uh uh. <laughs> Bitch, you done fucked up. <laughs> See, this thing gets stronger with each defeat. So. The list. Yeah. Uh, power things. Which did every time one of their monsters is destroyed. Basically. Ability card activate. Basically, um, yeah, dual monster spirits are actual spirits that have been extracted from people. And they're connected uh, by their wielder's uh, willpower, their life force. So, yeah, you don't have... So there's your life point, your actual life. So... Oh, we have had that before. Seal of Oikoko, Shadow Games. Dun, well, dun, dun. that's where it comes from. The Shadow Games origin. Dun. That's pretty much what this arc is telling. Not just the Pharaoh's background, but the background of the, of the Shadow Games themselves. Even though this is only one last major conflict, uh, pretty much at the end of the Pharaoh's reign. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Mahad goes to this uh, this like shrine, uh, this temple, where he apparently sealed the rest of his great power. Bakura shows up and challenges him. Mahad ends up like unleashing his full potential now that there's nobody else around, and blah, 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 blah. he ends up actually uh, losing that duel. But what happened was he merged with his uh, his own personal monster. Turns out Mahad is actually the Dark Magician. And then he has a princess, which we obviously know who she is. Mana, who looks very similar to a certain female spellcaster that Yugi ends up using. Yeah. Yeah, it's like really, guys, really, we're gonna we're gonna do this now. So apparently, you know, I would get into their backgrounds, but it's not really freaking necessary. The only ones that matter are Akhenaten and Seto, because it turns out Akhenaten, well, Akhenaten, yeah, he's the brother to Akhenaten Common, the Pharaoh's father, but he had his own son. Seto, who he had actually abandoned and, uh, and left him to fend for himself. You mustn't know that you're royal blood. And, you know, the fact that he came up and actually became one of the Pharaoh's guardians says something about him. So, Akhenaten has this deep-seated hatred of his brother and believes that he, or at least his son, should actually be Pharaoh. Bakura picks up on this, and so, well... You know, having won the Millennium Ring from Mahad, decides to, uh, you know, get crazy and mess with, uh, with Akhenaten. You know, bring out that inner darkness. Embrace your jealousy and your hatred and all that crap. 
So, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty much setting him up as like the, the secondary uh, villain for the arc. Yeah. So then set uh, struggles between, you know, good you know, and evil. Basically, yeah. He tries to get his son to, to you know, turn against the Pharaoh. And in order to do that, uh, he... Uh, he has found out about this uh, this weird woman with pale skin and blue eyes and like this whitish hair, you know, which is very odd for an Egyptian. Yeah, uh, and they claim that she's cursed. But you know, she contains this very powerful uh, this very powerful beast, the White Dragon. So you know, Agnaden wishes to extract this, and uh, you know, with this you'll be unstoppable. Here, accept my gift. Seto falls in love with this girl and she lays down her life for him and you know she gives him her power and it will always be with him then thus you know he gains the blue eyes white dragon and that's why Kaiba is so connected to them that's why he's obsessed with owning all of the blue eyes white dragon cards they're the only thing left of his beloved I mean we got a little sneak we got a little sneak peek at that. Yeah, we got a little sneak peek at that, uh, you know, during the duel between Kaiba and Ishizu. Uh, just as Yami Merrick starts to leave, thinking that the duel's over, it uh, gives Kaiba a vision of the past. You know, or a flash forward for us. You know, and so, yeah, boom, blue eyes. Well, anyway, Agnaden has outlived his, uh, his usefulness. Bakura has hunted down each of the Millennium item holders one by one, stealing their items, and booyah. All of the items have been placed inside uh, this Millennium Stone uh, with like uh, all of these, uh, these little hollows where each of the items belong. Turns out, the reason why he's doing this is because he's the last survivor of the massacre at the village of Kalelna. Akhenaten told his brother, the pharaoh, that there were, uh, there were dark times ahead of us and that uh, we needed something to repel the forces. You know, so we have strong magic that we can actually forge in order to repel invaders. But he kept the secret of how it has to be done from his brother. So that, because he knew he'd say no otherwise. So what they had to do is sacrifice. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly how many. I think it was a hundred, a hundred, a uh, hundred souls. I don't know. It's just their souls in uh, in the dub, but in the actual original version, their flesh, blood, and bone were melted and mixed with gold in order to make the Millennium Items. And they thought nobody saw this. Turns out a young Bakura actually did. And so he swore to get revenge. The spirits of Kalelna would provide him that revenge. They coalesced and created Diabound for him to use. Yeah. So basically, yeah. All the Millennium Items have been placed back into the stone, and boom, this very dark threat that was mentioned before, Zork the Dark One, has now risen. Zork and pals. <laughs> Pretty much what the hell this whole arc was. So, like I said, all I'm really here is just to make weird references. So, Big Mr. Snake Penis wants to actually, uh, like, destroy the world. <laughs> Yugi and friends have actually managed to jump into the, the vortex. Uh, they, they managed to go into the past. And, well, Yami Bakura from the present has decided to also split off and uh, hold Yugi and others at bay since they've now learned the Pharaoh's name. That's the only thing that can stop uh, Mr. Snake Penis. So, a long-held-out duel... So a long held out duel occurs and Bakura is just trying to stall and just burn Yugi's deck out. You know, 
and Yugi somehow turns it around. This is actually the first time we get to see Yugi's actual deck. I mean, little Yugi, kid Yugi. You know, we actually get to see his deck, which actually uses gadgets and silent swordsman and silent magician, and then his ace card that actually won it for him, Gandora, the Dragon of Destruction. So they managed to make their way back, but, you know, just before all this, Kaiba happens to enter the scene. You know, and Zork tries to tell off Kaiba. Kaiba's like, you know what? Fuck this shit. You know, as he summons his blue eyes ultimate dragon. You know, uh, any last words, human? Yeah, two. Neutron blast! And, yeah. Blue, blue eyes ultimate dragon did not do a damn thing. We even get background for Exodia, Shimon, uh, Grandpa's ancestor. Apparently, uh, that was his monster. He actually sealed its power using the Millennium Key. Uh, so he broke up into five pieces. He actually meditates and summons Exodia in his full form, and he wrestles with uh, with Zork, only to get his ass kicked. What? Uh so the pharaoh comes in you know uh, and he brings in the god cards uh, he brings in the god monsters they aren't really doing too good seriously obelisk got beat down slifer got uh, uh, knocked out of the sky the winged dragon of Ra got knocked out of the sky whoa here come the others we we found out your name uh, but we don't know how to show it to you so you know they concentrate on like this cartouche and the pharaoh's name ends up engraved on it don't ask me how memory world but you know then you know I, I know I haven't revealed it yet I'm, I'm getting to it so the pharaoh finally finds out his true name a Tim with this he actually has gained freaking power to actually merge all three Egyptian gods into Harakti, the creator of light. And this thing manages to burn down Zork and end it. After all that freaking time. Now, that's the end of it, but here's the freaking kicker. Turns out this entire thing was a dark RPG played by Yami Bakura and Yami Yugi in this dark freaking room with a freaking spotlight on this big ass table in the shadow realm that, that was the whole the whole fucking thing and it did make it very confusing it was a good arc it just went on forever and there were so many other plot threads overlapping and intersecting it was a tapestry a very big patchwork of all sorts of unnecessarily complicated crap. Because there were like three different Bakuras running around. There was the one playing the dark RPG that was Thief King Bakura, and then there was Yami Bakura that was dueling Yugi. You know, and just, what? You know, it's just, I don't know. But long story short, that has finally led to the Pharaoh recovering all of his memories and everything. So now, he can be at peace, or so it seems. He has to engage in a ceremony in order to release his spirit from the Millennium Puzzle. Where he has to lose a duel. Now, now traditionally this would be done with sword, uh, with sword fights, but, you know, I think that a duel... Uh, through dual monsters would suffice. Okay, so who has to do it? Somebody close to that person. And who is closer to him than little Yugi? So, that will be the final part of the original Yu-Gi-Oh! discussion. Coming up next. Bye.